Okay, people, listen up. That's right. <laughs> this is. We got some advice to give you this right is, now. Yeah, you gotta. Are you listening? Huh? You yeah. hear us over there? Say, say yes if you can hear us. Good enough. All right. Uh, first off, yeah. Welcome. Make, yeah. yeah well, I was hey, gonna say let's make sure we're live again. It looks like we are. Oh, great, great. We did it. Okay. Hey there. I'm Graham. I'm Ashkan, in case you just have no idea what's going on. You're watching two random guys in bathrobes. You know yep. you? And um, that's all the context you're going to get. There's no reason you should know why else you're listening to us. But we are going to dole out some totally unsolicited float advice. And uh, what are we going to be telling the uh, good people about today, Ashkan? Today we're talking about your safety, okay? <laughs> this is important. Today's topic is security and how to stop yourself from getting vandalized and looted and people just coming in and graffitiing over your couches. Stealing float tanks. Stealing your roof. And we've heard at least a couple cases of roof theft so <clears> far. <throat> and that's just in the float community. Yeah. So one was a tornado. But uh, okay, so where do we start with security? Um I guess like first of all that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> So we, uh, we've decided a couple things here, um, is that I was actually, I think, the least concerned about security. Right. As you can see. <laughs> Which is why you got the tiny beast <laughs> as opposed to the full-fledged. Well, so we do have, you know, basically everybody's shop is closed right now, right? Like, our shop is closed, our neighbors are closed, their neighbors are closed. It's just a gigantic strip of closed-down stores. And so the question arises, like, is there any concern for something happening during this whole time that all these shops are closed with gigantic glass windows just kind of begging to be smashed. And even here in Portland, uh, you know, we've had a lot of cases of vandalism, uh, both just, you know, graffiti and tagging and stuff like that, but also there was a whole string of exactly that, people smashing in windows and um, sometimes a theft, sometimes just vandalism going on. So yeah, if there's like a spectrum of nervousness about break-in and Ashcon's down here, I'm sort of like up here, so we're going to be maybe end up on different sides of this. And there's been, I mean, even we've seen just here on, on our street that our shop is on in Portland, kind of a variety of different responses from people, uh, ranging from just being closed and even having a big sign up that says, hey, we're closed for the moment, to some shops have actually just started putting plywood up on their, on their windows. Yep, spray painting help us on there. It's getting really <laughs> dramatic in certain areas. Um, yeah, and same thing, you know, we, uh, some places like ourselves have put up some tiny security cameras, which we'll talk about. Some places have actually just put up signs on the windows saying, hey, we're closed, but we've removed all valuables, you know, there's essentially nothing in here. And uh, then some places, I mean, we still have a, a cannabis dispensary open for business behind us, which in this case is actually kind of nice because we do still have an open shop who is at least keeping an eye on that little area. So, I mean, first of all, what you do is going to depend a lot on your region. Like, are you in a big city? Are you in a rural environment? Have there been cases in your city or your town already of vandalism or, you know, places getting broken into? Um, what kind of security do you have in place already? You know, some places already have security systems and cameras up in their lobby. And in that case, this might be, you know, you might kind of be set already. Yeah. Let me get, here's my pitch for... The not blast goers again. <laughs> Just here's my pitch for not going like real extreme with this, which is basically I I mean part of it is just that I don't I feel like we can contribute to a general sense of it not seeming like an apocalypse has happened. And so like the crazier you go with plywood and stuff like that, like kinda of, it becomes a little bit of an arms race, like it makes everybody go crazier and it creates this element of uh, it's the broken window effect, right? Like, there, there is a lot more likeliness for vandalism in a building that has broken windows. It kind of sets the, like, aesthetic of the entire scene to be one that might actually manifest more of this type of thing. So as a small way of trying to contribute to it not looking like literally the entire town has been 
overtaken. I can make a small pitch to not put up plywood on your windows or maybe go to like some of the more extreme lengths. Uh, that being said, I mean, I like I definitely think you should remove cash from your cash box or anything else that you're worried about uh, getting stolen from your shop. And the other nice thing, my only other nice thing I gotta say is there's really not much to steal from a float center. That's that's some of the good news, right? And like, well, like I really doubt someone's gonna take your float tanks. If they did, that'd be like real. In our case, like, you have to like knock down a tiny portion of a wall yeah, and get some out. Yeah, whole like, day disassembling it. Detailing. And, like yeah, it'd just be, be so insane. It'd be a big task. And a lot of your other value is in your walls and stuff like that. And I, I'm assuming you have insurance, so I don't know. That's that's where I'm coming from on the like more comfortable spectrum of not necessarily feeling like we should go into absolute 100 percent steel gated lockdown. For sure, and it totally depends, right, on, again, the area that you're in, population density, and what's already happening in, in that region, for sure. That said, if you do want to go more on lockdown, might I recommend complete blast doors? You can actually get those tied into a little button, like, it's just like a pump run button, you know, for your float tanks, except instead of running your pumps, it slings down these giant two-ton metal doors across all of your windows. Luckily, we had them installed before all of this, so for us, it was as easy as just pushing a button. Jake kept going in there late at night. Like, what's he doing in there, so you know? He needs some to way to keep him out. Uh, what we did actually settle on was some kind of, like, small security cameras. So that was, like, you know, that might be an in-between step between doing nothing and, uh... And blast doors, I guess. But um, and there, yeah. So I mean, first of all, we did take you know all the cash and, and kind of anything that was um, really valuable out of there for sure. Uh, we also decided to not put up <clears throat> a like big sign that said that we're closed. We thought that was maybe something that, you know, at the very least could invite some ideas or just be that little spark that while someone's walking by, they realize there's nobody's in there. I mean, at this point, we closed before the entire city kind of mandated everybody to close. Uh, so at this point, you know, maybe that's not really as as different because everyone knows everywhere is closed. But same thing, leaving the lights on. Um, we kind of did a yeah. little Home Alone thing where we put little cutouts to like dance in front <laughs> of the windows. Uh, no, we didn't do that. But we did, you know, recorded movie clips. <laughs> hey, what are you doing <laughs> out there? <laughs> Uh, but we did leave the lights on, right? I mean, that's a really simple one that isn't going to cost you that much money, leaving a couple lights on, and at least gives the illusion there might be someone kind of milling around and in there. And booby traps is not a bad idea <laughs> if you really if you want to get If you're in an area around. that's freezing cold right now, splash some yeah. water on the front like steps. you can go vigilante. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we, there, there's these security cameras called WISE, W-Y-Z-E, that's the ones we got. We kind of looked into a few different ones. Uh, those are kind of the, it seemed like the best bang for your buck. They're pretty much $20 each. Um, they live stream up to the, uh, the interwebs and, um, store your data for two weeks there for video. Uh, they're motion and sound activated, so you can set them on different timers, like for us around nighttime. Um, in our lobby, they go on and they actually detect motion if anyone were to break in there at night or, you know, break one of our front windows or something like that. You can also talk out of them, like, from your phone. And frighten you can... your employees. Yeah, yeah, like, I successfully <laughs> scared one of our shop managers just the other day by speaking through my phone out of the security camera in our lobby. So, right, I mean, that's right after that, I saw our other manager send a message to everyone, like, to the other managers who were still working, being like, by the way, we installed security cameras. <laughs> <laughs> you scared her so much that I'm sure she just immediately called. <laughs> that's security. That's, it's called a deterrent. <laughs> um... Yeah, I mean, and, and then also even whether or not you install security cameras, uh, we also got these little stickers that say, you know, this, this building is under 24-hour surveillance. Um, so again, you don't even need to install security cameras to get those stickers. You can just put them up on your windows, you know, anywhere. Um, but we did get cameras, and we do have these tiny little three-inch stickers um, that we're just putting on the front, and we have a little back window um, as well. So, And they're mounted inside, kind of like... There's one just like shooting our lobby, but the, there's another one facing out the kind of two front windows we have and the back window. So they're a little noticeable too, if you were to actually like look around before deciding to throw a big brick through our window. Um, I guess we also have, uh, this is just something that we have already before any of this, but we have a security film that goes on the outside of our windows. Um, so that way, you know, if someone does try to smash a window, the whole glass doesn't just like shatter kind of 
like splinters but stays in place or like even has some stretchiness to it if someone's trying to make their way through it. So that was just like something because we're in a kind of busy walking street sort of neighborhood to begin with we had we've had up in existence before this. Yeah, and I guess another thing too, I didn't even um, put this down on our notes or anything, but the just motion sensor lights at night are also really nice. You know, we have this back parking lot that doesn't get as much traffic and um, we definitely had a couple employee cars um, in the early days who got broken into and had windows broken in the back parking lot. And so we ended up putting up these really bright lights that are motion sensors. So if anyone's moving around back there, they um, turn on and yeah, that's pretty much stopped like most of the problems that were happening in our parking lot. So just a good general tip for float center security. Um, but yeah, also very good for when you're actually closed and no one's really <laughs> going in there too. I will say the one other benefit of the security cameras is it's kind of just fun to look at your shop from your house. It's like having a baby monitor or something. Like every once in a while, I'll just put it on and be like, oh, look at our lobby. You know, just sitting there. And, it's, and again, you can toss it out of it. So you can just be like, hey, yeah. hey, float on, how you doing? <laughs> Tank two, you hear me over there? What up, all my Tank twos? Raise your hands. Yeah, it's actually, it's surprisingly Raise pleasant. It's surprisingly comforting to, to look at your shop. So that's fun. Um, I get alerts at like three in the morning when a really loud motorcycle drives by <laughs> and it's like, someone's breaking in! And I'm like, what's going on? It's like, boom. Yeah, I turned, I turned those alerts off after the first night. Pro tip, don't, don't, definitely message or definitely manage your alerts. They can get pretty crazy if you have motion sensor things just sending to your phone. Um, and nothing's happened so far. I mean, yeah. that's the good news, right? Like, the, so far everything is, has been peaceful and and all good over here. Yeah, no break-ins, a um, little bit of like keying on our windows, definitely a lot of tagging in our neighborhood, which is uh, too bad to see. But, but that's, that's even though, uh, yeah, yeah that's not, not kind of independent for Portland. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> independent, oh yeah, Portland and our street in particular has a, has a, a rich history. Of <laughs> um, I guess one other, one other just uh, tip that worked for us recently, uh, which was we did actually have our window um, broken. And we did again before all of this. Yeah, before all of unrelated. this happened. Yeah, yeah, unrelated. Uh, and we did put up plywood, and it did get tagged. And then we painted over the plywood and put little decorative like blue circles on there and kind of a floaty design. And that absolutely stopped people from graffitiing on it. Something about just having like a little extra artwork or like a little more style to it made it not as much as this throwaway blank canvas like a piece of plywood. So. If you are boarding up anything, or again, even just putting up like, uh, I guess boarding up is what you do. If you're putting up plywood, consider painting it or just decorating it somehow to deter uh, people from, yeah, tagging it or, or doing other things. That was like or a, writing a statement that just says, I'm super stupid, sincerely. And then if they tag it, they're signing it. And you got them. Boom. You get some, that's legal proof. Um, all right, I'm feeling, I'm feeling <laughs> yeah. safe. Yeah. I mean, less so with the you touch thing. Okay. Hey, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, should we see if people have any questions? How many bathrobes do you guys have? <laughs> uh, a lot of bathrobes. A lot, yeah. Yeah. See if you can uh, spot when the uh, cycle ends, if ever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see, is, is that, that a blimp under live? It's actually a Zeppelin. Common misconception, but Zeppelins have some sort of actual hard structural frame, as you can see from Ridding. these lines, that give it a, even without the support of air, give it an actual physical structure, as opposed to a blimp, which is just entirely supported by air. Next question, is that Zeppelin dented? Is that <laughs> Zeppelin dented? It's been through some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh... Great, perfect. <laughs> we are good. Yeah, some tough, tough hitting questions this time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we will really, like, we'll probably answer anything that you shoot our way. So, <laughs> you know, feel free to just go crazy with those questions. Um, there's a slight delay here, so we'll probably even turn off the live, live broadcast before you get to them. But next time. Or tomorrow. That tomorrow is next time. So tomorrow. <laughs> uh... All right, giving people one last chance to sneak things in. Oh, good, yep. Uh, our audience is glad that you cleared up the whole Zeppelin 
but confusion. It's good. You know, we told people we teach them something with this live stream, and I feel like... And we finally, finally did. We did. It only took seven days. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everyone. Okay. Yep, that's it. See you all tomorrow. And uh, until then, be safe out there.